How to avoid air drying. Let's talk about it. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe here to my channel and click on that bell notification so you're notified every time I post a video because we're hopping right into this. The hair structure has three different levels, the cuticle, the cortex, and the medulla. And right now I have protected and then working with the cuticle she has had a olaplex one and two treatment all right moving in this is either her first or second time sitting in my chair i can't remember this video is years and years and years old okay guys and again there's also another client under my chair but this is not the same person but let's go ahead and break down the shampooing process you have three bonds holding your hair together one of those is the hydrogen bond that is temporarily broken by water most people your blowouts and your soap presses and just anything it doesn't pan out properly because your hair isn't properly cleansed co-washing the hair is not a thing and a lot of times sulfate free shampoos are not enough if you're a person who uses heavy oils and heavy butters in the hair but whenever i was servicing a client whether i was doing a soap press hair extensions anything the very first thing that i do is completely detoxify the scalp and the hair shaft this is a step that you cannot miss when you are using any type of heat tool whether that is a blow dryer or a flat iron it's really important that before you open and close the cuticle before you set and reset bonds right it's really important that you make sure that the hair shaft is 100 percent clean and the scalp is 100 percent clean because whatever is on there is going to go within the hair shaft once you open that cuticle and that's really important to understand all right so back to the blowout the thing that i'm using and the only thing that i'm using on her hair is a leave-in conditioner your leave-in conditioner is the heat protectant for your blowout please look at the screen you can see this on kimber's website the leave-in conditioner is a heat protectant for up to 450 degrees either 400 or 450 degrees i'm sorry but your blow dryer does not even reach 450 degrees so i think we can all use common sense right and conductive reasoning to say that a leave-in conditioner is the heat protectant for the blow dryer again the more products you put on the cuticle the more likely those products are to sit on the Harris cuticle or try to go inside of it right and so this is why it is really important that you make sure you have weightless hair whenever you are blow drying your hair weightless hair and the way to have weightless hair is to put a polymer on there that is not going to weigh it down so even though i'm recommending kimber to you guys that is my favorite leave-in this video Video is years old and before I have my own product line that's what I was using but it's not available use camera it is amazing or a leave-in conditioner of your choice you have options there are a lot of different options right but this is just my favorite one do what you will now when I tell you guys not to detangle the hair wet I mean detangle the hair wet if you can look at my comb even though it looks like I'm pulling I am not and you can notice that there is no hair in the comb there are not big globs of hair in her in the comb you know why I am not detangling her hair right now I am combing the product through her hair to detangle is to deconstruct not and tangles in the hair i already did that way before i shampooed her hair the clip of the woman who was getting her hair shampooed again that is a completely different person but her hair was detangled with oil before she went to the shampoo bowl now if you are combing your hair after you shampoo it you may see little strands in the comb and those are the pieces of hair that didn't make it out through the first detangling process you know and that's normal but there should not be globs and globs in the hair and that is why at this point you may see me go from the top to the bottom instead of going from the ends up to the hair shaft because that is something you have to do when you are detangling hair hair that has been properly detangled can be combed through 
Okay, guys. So this is something that I really want people to understand. I am not breaking my clients hair in any way, shape or form. I'm not stopping it and taking comb out of the brush. You can visually see that there is not hair, a bunch of hair in my comb. As much as I've combed her super thick hair, like I'm on the second section. A lot of people, and this isn't to be rude. I'm just like giving you a visual, like even though you can see it. Most some people only have like the amount of hair that she has in one section of hair on a whole head. And that is all the hair that is in the comb from combing two sections of hair. This is why I want y'all to understand that there is a difference between combing and detangling. You have to detangle your hair before the hydrogen bond is broken. Before you wet your hair, you need to detangle it. This is why when a lot of you detangle your hair, you have clobs and clobs and clobs of hair within the brush because you think that you have to wet your hair first to detangle it, not understanding that when you break the bonds, your hair is weaker, right? So I want you to imagine if you have three sticks that are like holding something together, right? And the only way that the foundation is going to be firm is if these three planks, let's call them planks, if these three planks stay locked together, right? That's the only way that the bridge is going to be intact. But imagine if whenever water comes, those, those different planks, they all break apart then they're going to be a lot weaker. It's They're not going to be as strong and it's not going to be safe for people to walk across those planks because they're broken apart. That's what happens when your hair is wet. When your hair is wet, the hydrogen bond breaks like the planks breaking apart. So it's way harder for you to walk across because the hair then becomes paralyzed. This is why it feels easier to detangle your hair when it's wet because your hair is paralyzed. It's not fighting against you. There's no strength. The elasticity is weakened a little bit because those bonds are broken. This is why I don't really recommend to people like, you know, letting their hair air dry is something that I really, really, really don't recommend for you to do. Because again, what do you think is healthier for your hair for those bonds to stay broken for like two to three hours or for those bonds to stay broken for about 30 minutes or 20 minutes, however long it takes for you to blow dry your hair, or maybe an hour uh, or an hour and a half, however long it takes you to sit under a hooded dryer with a roller set in or flexi rod set in. Because these are things that we all really have a problem with accepting. Why is it that all of a sudden we're just so against heat in any way, shape, or form? I know why. It's because you guys have been following fake science or fake fads and made up things for a long time this comment right here you guys read it she's basically saying that people told her that high porosity hair doesn't have oil like it doesn't produce sebum you don't produce sebum when you have high porosity hair that's the gist of it and that could not be further from the truth but because so many of you believe this right it's something that hunts you it's something that makes you put product after product in your hair but as you can see as I'm blow drying her hair it is all about tension you don't have to use a round brush I'm using a round brush because as you can see these teeth are a lot smaller and there are so many of them like you can barely count them with the naked eye right but with these teeth being so close together what it allows me to do is separate each hair strand the average person has a hundred thousand follicles and every follicle has anywhere between one to four strands well every pore on your scalp has one to four hair strands coming out so that's approximately 100,000 to 400,000 strands of hair on your head. So I'm going to ask you a question. What, how do you think it's easier to separate all of those strands so you can treat them all individually? Would it be with your fingers or would it be with a tool that is separated, right? This is something that I really want everybody to think about. Um, up on the screen, you're just going to see a couple of different comments from the seven day challenge. People saying that they are noticing 
oil sebum coming from their scalp they're noticing their skin cell turnover cycles resetting that is because these people that these people I'm sorry these women these beauties that are within the challenge they are really working with their bodies and natural chemistry and they're not working against it so let's learn a little bit about our body's natural chemistry and sebum production right so our scalp has this little thing called a pore and underneath that pore is this little thing called a follicle within that follicle there is a sebaceous gland and that sebaceous gland produces sebum and that's sebum goes up the hair shaft and it covers the scalp to protect it but guess what there are also dead skin cells right and those dead skin cells if not removed can get caught up with the bacteria that lives within the hair follicle and it can get caught up within all of the different dead skin cells and then if it's not removed there is inflammation created and when you create inflammation the next thing that happens after inflammation is you slowing down sebum production which would in return give you the appearance of dry scalp even though your skin is not dry what's actually happening is you have a bacterial infection of the hair's follicle which in return is going to slow down your skin's natural skin cell turnover cycle because every 28 days the skin cells that live on your scalp they die they fall off and they make their way up with new skin brand new skin with brand new hair this is why it is so imperative not to put oils and butters on the scalp the only thing that you're supposed to do to the scalp is shampoo it that is it the only thing that is supposed to go on your hair is shampoo and the reason why most women have scalp inflammation and all of these different forms of alopecia all of these severe cases of balding is because the natural sebum is not allowed to flow up we are air drying our hair and because you are air drying your hair what you're doing is allowing the natural bacteria that lives on your scalp to multiply why because it's a colonizing bacteria the bacteria that lives on your scalp is a colonizing bacteria which means the better the environment it is in the more of it it can create it will reproduce itself over and over and over again I am not making this up you can check and verify everything I am saying with scientific fact it is a colonizing bacteria check the link in the description box below where I give you the exact name of that bacteria and any bacteria you know it's favorite environment right it's favorite environment is wet humid environments and this bacteria specifically favorite food is oil so when you are washing your hair and leaving it wet and applying different oils and butters to define your curl pattern and to make your twist outs last you are literally just making your scalp a petri dish for bacteria and this is why right now across social media you see so many women with naturally curly hair going into doctor's offices getting uh, skin biopsies scalp biopsies and having to see dermatologists and getting scalp injections and all types of things because over the last decade well over a decade with the team natural community the things that you are taught is to build a great environment for bacteria to grow and the perfect environment for bacteria again is wet environments this is something that everybody is really really learning within the seven day challenge and within the seven day challenge we are sharing information with each other because there are a lot of things to unlearn there are so many different things to unlearn even down to the way that we wear our hair but what is really really interesting is to just see the way that women are so open to learning but in the midst of us learning right in the midst of us learning different things there is so much confusion but it's amazing that when you really learn the science of hair like the women have done in my seven day challenge and like some of you who are just here on my channel binge watching my content so many of you have learned that there are so many different things 
that go into having healthy hair, right? And the things that go into it do not require you to constantly spend money at the beauty supply store. It just requires you to really sit down and get education, get educated on things because tools are there to help you through certain processes. Just like with me round brushing her hair, there are so many hair stylists that say, oh, round brushes are damaging. Those are women who don't know how to use a tool. Those are women who are not properly educated on how to use a round brush. Any stylist that tells you that round brushes are damaging is just one who hasn't mastered the round brush. And, and that's just a simple fact because you can also look at the round brush from the beginning to the end of this video and see that it is not packed full of hair. I'm not pulling or tugging on her hair because there are methods to the madness. So here on the screen, this is still within the seven day challenge within the group and we are they were having a conversation and this conversation you're about to see has nothing to do with me they have community they talk to each other they support each other and she was asked in the group of whether or not anybody's noticed all of these different videos on her feed on their youtube feed of people having different scalp disorders different hair shaft disorders going in to see um doctors and stuff and she was basically trying to point out that when they talk all of the different things that they said that they do to lead up to the follicle infections and scalp disorders are all of the things that I tell you not to do like oil in the scalp and grease in the scalp like there was a certain person that um, most of you have probably seen the video where she had to go get a, um, a skin biopsy because she has a form of alopecia and when you go look at her content and her older videos all of her content is air drying the hair twist outs and wash and goes and putting oils and butters in the scalp on a daily basis right so these are things that I want everybody to think about and air drying the hair is another thing that everybody swears by and when you say anything of the latter you're attacked right and that is because there are a lot of people who are licensed cosmetologists who folded and ended up switching over to team natural and now they have to keep these things going but the reason that i make content like i make is because when you see people like this that do a flexi rod set in their beard i need you guys it doesn't matter right i need you guys to really pay attention to the science it's not a big deal you don't have to listen to me you don't have to choose between me and another influencer you don't have to choose between me and another video because i'm not giving you my tactics I am showing you the way that the human body was made and I am showing you the processes that you can follow to aid the human body in the processes that it was naturally made to follow you can see here within the group I show women to get a mannequin stop being a test dummy don't just do the twist outs and all of that stuff and don't test out my theories on yourself test out my theories on a mannequin and you see do your your styles and stuff on the mannequin and do it my way on the mannequin and then see which one works out see which one is easier to keep up with see which one holds up the integrity of that mannequin get two mannequins have one team natural mannequin and have one mannequin that has some of my tactics where we're setting the bonds with either a blow dryer a hooded dryer doing a flexi rod set a roller set doing just sitting under a dryer without combing your hair and doing a flexi rod set or doing a roller set are two completely different things they're two completely different things it's not the same and in a video coming really soon I'm gonna go so deep into setting the bonds I'm going so deep into air drying I'm going so deep into setting the bonds of the hair shaft to make it plain for you so it doesn't matter who makes a video saying that I'm a fraud it doesn't matter who makes a video saying that I'm wrong or I'm making things up it doesn't matter because I don't deal with emotion. I deal on facts and I deal on data.
right? Because the only time you can get facts, right, is when you have a theory that you test with a body of data and you get the same test over and over and over and over and over again on multiple subjects. And then not only have I been able to do that, my loves, but I've also been able to make the same process into a seven day challenge right that women who have no idea what I'm talking about as it pertains to the way that the human body works they haven't taken any classes on the composition of the human body but in less than three days they can reset their hair growth cycle in less than three days they see sebum production in less than three days they reset their natural skin cell turnover cycle So I'm not here to go back and forth. I'm not here for entertainment. I'm not here to react to videos, to stir your emotions, to make you feel good. It's tough because I'm not really at a place where I care about whether or not you like or dislike me because I'm not here for that. That's not why I'm here. I'm here for something completely different. In the next video, I'll go a little deeper into that for those who are interested. But I just want you guys to know that when it comes to setting the bonds in your hair, it's really important that you have a routine and a pattern. It's really important that you know your scalp's profile. For example, there are some women whose scalp's profile allow for them to have a blowout, allow for them to wear their hair flat iron. They don't sweat in their scalp even when they work out every single day. But there is another woman with another scalp's profile like mine right who has a high sebum level so my hair is super oily super oily and I have a super super active sweat gland so I sweat in my sleep silk presses aren't for me that's not my thing because my hair gets wet at night so I go down a different route when it comes to setting the bonds in my hair but my bonds have to be set because when they don't my hair breaks off And it stops my length. It stops length retention. It stops hair growth because it's slowing down sebum production. And when I slow down sebum production, I get different infections within my follicle. It sets off hydronitis superativa, different things like that. So I really hope that this makes sense to you guys. I really hope that it's been easy for you to follow as you watch me do this blowout Um, again. I'm no longer behind the chair and most of the people who booked consultations appointments with me wanted the round brush. Like they didn't want me to use a pedal brush. They was like, oh, can I get that round brush work? So that's what it is. I want y'all to notice that no matter how I'm holding the brush, I am going in a downward motion in the direction of her cuticle because the purpose here has been to set her bond when I wet her hair with water I broke the hydrogen bond right and after I broke the hydrogen bond I am going back to set it again and it's not going to get curly again until I wet it with water but I'm not damaging her hair in any way shape or form because like you saw I already sprayed her hair down with a leave-in conditioner that gives me heat protection for up to 400 degrees this blow dryer is not 400 degrees so this blow dryer will not cause heat damage on her hair at all unless I hold the brush wrong unless I hold the blow dryer wrong or unless I do something wrong any heat damage anything that is caused to her hair is all user error all right at this point I am doing a cold shot so I would always use the round brush to straighten the hair with the blow dryer and then I go back and seal the cuticle up with a cold shot with um, the blow dryer and a powder brush and my blow dryer is on cold or cool so this is how I blow dry hair and again you don't have to blow dry your hair you can do a flexi rod set you can do a perm rod set you can do a roller set long before anybody started washing and going outside our moms our grandmas were using rollers perm rod sets straw sets flexi rod sets like they were 
doing so many different things and when you say set after those words it is literally meaning setting the hydrogen bond that's what they were talking about the whole time i really hope that this video makes sense my very next video is going to be on ashwagandha and then the video after that is going to be about air drying your hair so you guys watch as many videos as you want and collect as much as many videos about the latter as you see fit because i don't care who makes a video about what i come to stand on business i'm just playing y'all <laughs> i'm just gonna bring you guys the facts and you can look them up yourself and you can make the decisions on what you want to follow and what you want to believe all i'm doing is putting the information out there and i don't feel away either way i'm happy if you listen and i'm happy if you don't it doesn't really do anything for me my job is done my only job is to bring you the information and I can sleep well at night knowing that you have all of the tools that you need to get to the places that you need to go and it's up to you and if you don't do it it's your choice and it's not because I didn't do my job all right I love you bye